What's up everyone? Welcome to today's video. As you guys see from the title, today we're going to be changing the clutch on the 350Z. I'm currently running to O'Reilly so I can pick up some gaskets and some miscellaneous parts that I ordered. I got a rear main seal, the oil pan gaskets, because I might swap the rear main seal if I do see some leakage or anything. I also got a new clutch slave cylinder ordered. And I also got the gaskets for the exhaust. So I'm going to pick up these parts and I'll show you guys all the part numbers and everything I got so you guys can get it for yourself if you need it. And I'll see you guys over at the house. You guys can see that the clutch is slipping. Check this out. I'm in fifth gear right now. Oh, this thing is well overdue. Let me, let me, let me stop. I got to make it home. All right, so car's on the lift. I'm already home. First thing we have to do is take off the shift knob and the shift boot and then take off the plastic trim. That way we can get to the three bolts that are holding the transmission cover. To take off the shift knob, all you gotta do is untwist it. But it's gonna be a little hard, so you're gonna need both your hands. Okay, so it's gonna be a little seized up. So uh, you have to break it loose, but there you go. There's your shift knob, you wanna set that aside. Okay, plastic piece. The, with the AC control module, everything comes out all together. When you take it off, you wanna be careful with this uh, ribbon wire thing that controls the AC controls and everything. And then you have this other plug on the bottom. And then there's the shift boot going to the tranny. Then you gotta take out the four bolts that hold in that plate. Okay, after you take it everything off, you got this shift boot and then you can see the bottom of the car. All right, so before you guys do anything to the car, you wanna make sure you disconnect that battery. I just disconnect both terminals. People say you can just leave the positive one off or the negative one off and you'll be fine, but I like to disconnect both. Don't even have to worry about it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys all the parts that I have today. Um, I have the Fel Pro. This is my rear main seal and it has the upper oil pan gasket. Here's my uh, clutch slave cylinder. Power torque, they got lifetime warranty. Should be really good. Permatex gray silicone for uh, max torque and high temperature. It's gonna be perfect for the rear main seal because it's got that high temperature oil and stuff. This is my exhaust gasket. These are for the front. There's my part number 6067 and then the one bigger one rear for the white pipe 13731-1 Nixon. And I have the bleeder here so I can bleed the clutch line after I uh, put that on. And here's the flywheel. I'm gonna be installing it. it's a lightweight 17 pound flywheel and the clutch is underneath of it. I also have a stainless steel clutch line I'm gonna be installing from Z1 Motorsports. First thing I'm gonna take off obviously is the white pipe, get it completely out of the way. Okay, now I can go down. There's your white pipe, gotta set this aside. It is starting to get chilly. Look at this sky, it looks freaking amazing. Makes you appreciate the world. Got the white pipe off. So next thing I'm gonna take off is the drive shaft. Going to here, so we got, looks like 17 millimeter bolts, nuts and bolts. And then we should be able to slide that out from over there. So what I did to make it easier for myself is I labeled the plugs two, two, and then I did this one, one and one. So I know which plug goes back with which plug. Okay, so I got all the plugs unplugged in the transmission, all the harness, everything from the back to the front. You can see all the wires hanging here. I didn't take the, bracket, the wires off of the brackets. I just took the whole brackets off because I'm gonna have to take them off anyways. Just get them out the way completely. It was a little bit harder to get this plug on top, but I just stuck a flathead screwdriver right through here and then pulled it out and it pulled right out. Pretty simple. So now I'm gonna take off the slave cylinder. You got two 12 millimeter bolts and that should come right out. Okay, so I forgot to take off these three bolts from the top to take off the shifter. That way I can slide the transmission back easier and not hit the frame of the car. You got this rubber boot over top of it, slide it right out. And then you got these three 10 millimeter bolts and then that holds that in. Take those off, slide this right out. Okay, so to take that off, you have to take off this rubber boot on the bottom. Take out this 12 millimeter bolt, slide it out. There you go. Oh, the spring spun that up, but you guys get it. I should have done it the other way around, taking this out first and then do the top, but. So now we take off the bolts holding the transmission to the engine. So we have 14 millimeter bolts on the bottom, and then we're gonna have some bigger 17 millimeters on the top. Don't forget to take off the shifter because you're gonna have issues sliding it back if you don't. All right, so I got all the bolts off of the transmission and I have them all nice and laid out here. Um, this is the right side, this is the left side. The two top bolts are up above. 
I did find it that it was a lot easier taking off the two top ones from the top. So I just got on top of the motor and it was pretty much wide open. So it should be pretty easy. Two 17 millimeters on the top. Got the transmission jack there. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag that over here, set it up, get it ready about right here. This is where most of the weight of the transmission's at. And then you got the bell housing, which is blank. So most of the weight's gonna be like about right here. Um, and then I'll go ahead and take these bolts off. I can jack this up a little bit and then slide it back. So I pretty much have it all nice and set up. You guys can see I got the transmission jack all the way up. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take off these bolts and then I'll go and get a hand real quick. I just seen that I also have this bracket here that I gotta take out. So it's two 12 millimeter bolts and that should come right out too. And then what I like to do is just re-thread the bolts back where you took them off from. That way you don't get the bolts all nice and mixed up and then you got a puzzle to put together. All right guys, so check this out. Transmission is out. I left it on the stand. Um, went as far down as I can, that way I can work. It's actually perfect so I can change this bearing and stuff. And I gotta clean all the inside of the housing. But you can see that here's the stock clutch. You can see it's all nasty and burnt up. Uh, gotta take off all these bolts. But before I do any of that, I wanna just get all the work done here. I'm gonna clean this up real quick. And then I'm gonna change this out and I'll show you guys exactly how to do all that. Pop out. There you go. And then you gotta pull this up. There you go. The fork came out with the whole boot and everything, but the way you see it is the way you put it back in. Look at all this dust, it's dirty, filthy. I got some uh, Super Tech engine degreaser. So we got our bearing here, pretty wore out. Here's the one that came with the clutch kit, nice fresh new one. So we have, what we have to do is take this one off of this and then we have to press this one on back. Put this somewhere where it's sitting on both sides like this and then you can hit this middle piece out, bam, with the socket and then you should be good. And then press the other one back in. All right, so I got the uh, new bearing pressed in, looking nice and sharp. Got the spring and everything connected to the fork. Um, it's pretty simple to understand it. Just put it back together the way you took it apart. So if you guys take a look, I'll show you. This is how it's supposed to look. You got the clip going up on the fork and then it connects to this piece. I don't even know what it's called. So what I'm gonna be using for my transmission is some Schaefer 229 Molly Ultra Red Synthetic Blend Grease. This stuff is amazing. Just put it around that. You want to put grease inside of there because that's going to be sliding back and forth on that shaft. So you want it lubed up. There you go. Okay, so you got to pop this in place. You got to push it hard. There you go. Here it lock in. And there you go. That's it. All this is brand new, basically. Check this out, guys. It makes me feel good about myself. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take off the clutch and flywheel right now. That way I can see what I'm gonna get into with the rear main seal. Wow, that's falling off of it already. Take this last one off, this thing should just drop. There you go. There it is. Here it is, you can see this thing is all burnt up. This thing is toast. Almost down to the rivets. Basically is, this thing is junk. Stock clutch lasted about 140,000 miles. So uh, I think that's pretty good. The socket that you're going to need is a Torx T55. Okay, so you can do what I did, which is probably not the best idea, but I just gotta 
wrench and uh, put a bolt on the top, put a bolt on the bottom, let it call onto that, and that's what's holding it for me in place so I can take these bolts loose. So you guys didn't see it, but I broke my, uh, my Torx bit, so I don't know if I have another one. I gotta go check it. Yo, I got so lucky. I got another one, but it's in a half inch drive, so I got a, I got the big boy wrench. What the heck? I should have got this from the start. I highly suggest you guys use a half inch driver because this, this made a freaking difference. I'm already done with those three bolts. Okay, there it is. Looks like we have uh, some oil leakage here. And it's been leaking slowly, but uh, soon to be a lot. Maybe it's a good thing I got that rear main seal. I am definitely going to need to do it. There's the old flywheel and clutch. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at this rear main seal. I'm done for the day. I'm just gonna look at what I have to deal with doing this rear main seal. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out. See you guys in like two seconds. All right, we're back. It's the next day. So I got three 10 millimeter bolts and then take out the rear main seal. One thing you wanna do is drain your oil before you take off the rear main seal. I already got the three bolts off, but I realized, dang, I should drain the oil because if I take this off, it's gonna, all the oil is gonna come out, so. Oil, it is pretty dirty. I was like, wow, I actually, I just changed this oil. If you guys wanna see my video on how to change your oil on your 350Z, you can go check out the video on my channel. What I did before my 300ZX is I lifted up the motor from the front and I just took off the two motor mounts and it, made, it gave me enough room to take the oil pan out. So I'm gonna try to do the same thing with this. So I gotta take off the two bolts holding the motor mounts and then get a jack on the harmonic balancer and try to lift it up a little bit. I got all the hoses and everything that are hooked up to the oil filter housing off. Everything's good to go. Now I just gotta unbolt the two bolts holding the engine mounts. Okay, so before you even lift up the motor, you gotta make sure you take off your bar on top. I didn't, it's a little crooked because the harness is still connected to it, but just get that out of the way because if you try to lift it with that on, it's gonna hit, obviously, it won't go up. So I removed the lower oil pan and it did spill oil so I had to clean all that up right now but um, I removed that and you can see we have access now to those bolts you do have bolts inside of here you gotta take off so looks like we got uh, three on this side two big ones on this side so so you guys will not believe what I just ran into so I was taking off those bolts I was on actually on my last one one of the long ones check this out decided to break on me so now I gotta deal with that once I get the pan up. There you go. That's it. Pan should be able to slide out now. We're not able to get the motor all the way up to slide the pan out. So uh, we got it high enough so we can just clean up, clean it up, and then uh, change, put that RTV, change the gaskets and stuff, and then put the pan back on and put the motor back in place. But uh, we got it pretty high up, sketchy. Don't do this guys, just take off your subframe. Look how high that motor is. <laughs> Look at the air filter. Next to the frame of the radiator. So the Z gods just came through and I was luckily able to get that bolt out, the broken bolt. So now I got this tool so I can clean up all of the uh, excess RTV and just get that thing nice and cleaned up. And then put that fresh RTV in so that we can throw the pan back on, put this thing back down. So it's currently two in the morning. Uh, my phone died, my camera died. Last clip you guys saw, I think, was when we finished putting the motor back in place. First of all, before anything, I want to give a massive shout out to my dad for giving me a hand. You know, I wouldn't have been able to do this alone. If you guys are going to do this the way I did it, make sure you get an extra hand because uh, you're going to need it. We got the motor pretty much back in place. Got the oil pan back on, all the bolts tightened up. And right now, I'm just waiting for this silicone on the lower oil pan to dry up so I can tighten that up too. And then we'll be done with the gaskets change and everything. That is the hardest part of what I'm doing. So 
it is a lot of work. The next day, we're gonna get this thing done today, hopefully. What I first gotta do is put together all the pulleys and the belts and everything, put all that back in place. I got the whole front end back together. All my plugs and hoses and lines and everything are hooked back up. And I put the oil filter back on and all the bolts and everything, the pulleys. So I'm looking in the back over here before I start putting anything on the transmission or flywheel. Now that this is wide open, I'm just gonna go ahead and change my, uh, my clutch line. So I got the old one off. You can see it's leaking all that dirty clutch fluid out, uh, the brake fluid. Um, it is pretty dirty, it's the original from factory. And this is what I'm gonna be putting back on. We got the Z1 Motorsport stainless steel clutch line. And it's actually heat insulated, so it should give us that longevity for the brake fluid and overall better performance whenever I'm on a track. All right guys, so as you can see, I got the new uh, clutch line in and it looks phenomenal. So I'm gonna get that flywheel now. And you guys can see this little pinhole. That's where you're gonna put your little guide pin on the flywheel, I'll show you guys. These are all the bolt holes for the flywheel. And if you guys see that little pinhole, that is where your guide pin is going to go. The pin I was just telling you about. Guide that pin in. What you're going to want to get is some Loctite, some thread locker. You want to get the red stuff and then just put a little dab on all the bolts. Alright, so you get your flywheel bolts here, your thread locker. Just put a dab of a uh, thread locker on it. That's it. Should be good to go. And then thread that on. Okay, 65. Let's see where we are in 65. The flywheel is going to probably move. I don't think so. Huh? We're having some technical difficulties tightening up these bolts, but you're supposed to torque them down to 62 foot pounds to 68 foot pounds on the stock flywheel bolts. Foot pounds of torque, right? Getting ready to put the disc on and the pressure plate. So before we do that, we gotta clean the surface of the clutch. So get yourself some brake cleaner and just spray it down. That wind blowing into my face. You got your disc here, got a six puck. And then you got your uh, guide pin. You gotta slide that in and then slide it right into the, where the flywheel is. That's it. So it goes on a certain way. You can figure out how it goes on. It's pretty easy. Get your bolts and just put them on. We're gonna set our torque wrench to 20 foot pounds first, and then we're gonna torque them down in the same sequence. Uh, 21. Just slide this off. That's it. We're good. Moment of truth. My battery died, so I'm gonna show you guys the progress that we have made so far. So we got the transmission in. Um, most of the bolts are on, all the bolts on the bottom are on. I just gotta do the top bolts. And then right now what I'm gonna work on is doing all the harness. Try to get you guys a nice up close of how exactly these wires go. You got these two here. Take both of these off. So I have completely finished um, putting on all the bolts on the transmission to the block of the engine, tying on all of them, and I finished with the harnesses and all the plugs and everything, O2 sensors, got everything looking nice and clean, the same exact way as if it would have came out from the dealer. So uh, that's one thing that I like to do whenever I work on my cars, I like to put everything back the way it is from factory, make it look as clean as possible. So I already went in the inside of the car, I already put the shifter back in, and I tightened out the bolt. So now I'm gonna put this boot back on and then I can start putting back on the drive shaft. That's it. Now we get our 17 millimeter bolts and nuts. 
So drive shaft is on, everything is nice and tightened up. So now I'm ready to put the white pipe on. So now I got all my gaskets here. I already showed you guys the part numbers. So this thing is pretty straightforward to put on. Just put it on the way you took it off. The white pipe is fully on, completely bolted up and nice and tightened up. So we're good to go. Tying up the bolts that hold the test pipes, test pipe support that go to the tranny, all that's good. Everything on the bottom down here is nice and solid. So now what I have to do is bleed the clutch line. Need to add the oil to the engine because um, I took the engine oil out and then gotta add the clutch fluid and bleed it. Checking the oil on the Z suck because you can fill it up and then on the dipstick it shows like if it's way over full but you just gotta wait for all the oil to settle down so I don't know how long I have to wait but this thing sucks but yeah I'm adding oil now once I have the oil then I can plug the battery in and then start the car see if it goes in the gear it's been going in the gear nice and smoothly clutch pedal feels good now um, I pump it a little bit and now it feels great so all right interior is back together put the shift knob and everything on so I checked all the fluids, oil seems like it's good, everything is good, so let's go for the startup, see how it does. So that may go on the gears, so we're good. Before I do take it off the lift, I am gonna pressure wash the bottom, all the oil and old residue that was in the that's what was under the motor and all the power steering fluid and everything that's leaking. So uh, I'm gonna pressure wash that real quick and then we'll take it for a spin real quick, see how the gears feel. See all that oil that was on that thing, it's gone now. It's still a little bit, but that's no big deal. It's just like stains. But yeah, the whole bottom is nice and pressure washed, nice and clean. So now all I gotta do is finish putting on the uh, splash shield and we're good to go. The only issue that I'm having is whenever I take off. Check, listen to, listen. Oh, I guess that wasn't so bad. But it has this issue where it uh, it has a vibration to it. I'm not sure why. Six gear went in pretty smooth. That one felt pretty good. It made that little vibration again going into fifth. Go to fourth right now. Oh, you guys heard that, right? I'm sure you guys heard that. Yeah, it doesn't like the downshifts. So whenever I downshift now, I have to like tap the gas a little more. I still don't like the way that it feels whenever I take off, but I don't know if it's because I'm taking it off too, too lightly, like because I'm used to the stock clutch, so I'm not sure if I need to take off a little bit more rougher or faster, but I gotta do some research and now I'll let you guys know pretty successful first drive it drives pretty good goes through all the gears smoothly and uh, overall it's pretty good so I think we uh, hopefully I don't want to jinx myself but I think we had success so this is the only issue with uh, lifting up your motor so it was uh, pretty successful I'm actually very happy with the results I'm glad that the car is drivable it drives pretty smooth you know overall it drives really good and uh, I just have to rev it a little bit more now, I guess because it's stage three. I'm gonna do some more research tonight on that and see if that's the issue. I just need to rev it a little bit more because the clutch is a lot more aggressive. It grabs like instantly, not like before where I can like release it slowly and it'll go on by itself. I actually have to rev it now to get going, but I hope this video was really useful for you guys. It was a lot of hard work for me to do all this work and film at the same time, so I really hope it was a uh, useful for you guys hope you guys enjoyed watching today's video this is going to be a pretty long video probably going to be my longest video yet if you guys enjoyed watching please give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already and uh stay tuned for tina her turbo is actually coming should be here sometime next week if not the week after but i did get some good news from turbonetics and uh if you guys would like to stay updated with all that stuff check out the instagram at 2 z put it right here right there and uh, you guys stay updated daily. So um, thank you guys for watching. Peace out. And I hope to see you guys in the next one.